Today we're going to tear apart a spigot water bulb. The most interesting part is what's going on inside here. Uh, we can see that there is a passage for the water to flow horizontally and then vertically down. And what's going to block that passage in there, here, is going to be this silicone part that's going to be withdrawn vertically. And what withdraws the part is a simple lever that's attached in there. And we pull the lever and the silicone part withdraws vertically. Underneath the silicon region, there is a compression spring. This spring varies in diameter. It starts with a larger diameter where the cap is, and it gets into a smaller diameter to interface with the bottom part of this pin. So this bottom part of the pin interfaces with the shorter diameter spring, and the larger diameter of the spring interfaces in there. Now let's think big picture. Why are things designed the way they are? We used a compression spring because by default we want the water valve to be closed, meaning that there's no water coming out of the faucet. Therefore we want it to be in the expanded configuration by default and that's why we use a compression spring. I'm going to show you the four most interesting things about this cab model in the next few minutes. Number one, we use something called resilient cab modeling. What that means is that we use all the design intent in this skeleton group up here and everything underneath is derived from this skeleton group. The skeleton group contains all these sketches, all design intent, all dimensioning, all the pictures, everything that we use to create the part. Everything underneath the skeleton group is just going to convert those entities to create these solid bodies. So if you know SOLIDWORKS, what that means, if you change the skeleton group, any of these sketches up here that you're seeing is going to change the bodies underneath. That's a very high level parent-child relationship that allows you to change things without the whole model breaking. If you want to know how to use resilient cat modeling, just leave in the comments below or reach out to us directly. Number two, reverse engineering the handle using photographs and the tracing tool. So there's a video in the description below that's going to show you how to import a photograph to SOLIDWORKS. And let me show you, of course, all dimensions are going to be up here in the skeleton group. Let's show these sketches. This is the side view that gave me the, the contour of the handle. And this is the front. So I imported just two photos. And let me scroll down to where the handle group is. Underneath the handle folder, it's got all the, folder, the, the um, features relevant to the handle. And the fillet is at the very end as part of resilient CAD modeling. So what I did, let me walk you through the steps. First, I was able to do an extrusion using the tracing, using the photo in the back. Then I came to the front plane and I did also a, a sketching using the, the photograph in the background and I did a cut. Now I need to do the top handle and it's got very complex geometries. So what I did, come back to the right plane, did an extrusion for the top of the handle and instead of having to come to the top and do another photograph yet, I simply dimensioned with a calipers in my hand how far it was from here to here and how far it was from here to here. I made a sketch for that as you can see there and then I did split using the sketch and that's what gave me this geometry. I thought that was a pretty clever way of mixing the photographs for reverse engineering and using the calipers in my hand to get the desired geometry. Number three, the intersect tool, one of my favorite personal features. So as you become more advanced in SOLIDWORKS, you learn about that sometimes you need to merge and unmerge the bodies for the features to be used successfully. Which features do you want to keep? Which ones do you want to exclude? And all you got to do is you just click on the geometries that were inside here that are not visible anymore, and you get rid of them all in one click. Number four, how do you build this little triangular wing, if you will, that's on the side? Because it's not on a particular plane. That should give you a hint. The answer is 3D sketching. Let me walk you through it real quick. So what you do, I have started from here. You select a couple of vertices, one here, another up here, another in the space here, and another back here. And that gets your first surface, as you can see. The second surface is that vertex there, another vertex here, another here, and another here. That gets your second surface. 
Then your third surface, vertex here, 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 and here. Then you gotta hide this face, so you come at it from the other side. You connect more vertices, and on the last one, uh, yeah, that was the last one, then you do fill surfaces and you make it into a solid. You don't merge the bodies yet, so what you do is you mirror this body on the other side. So now you have two, and then you combine the bodies. And now you got your handle. As bonus, if you want to learn how to reverse engineer threads, which is not something easy, we have a LinkedIn article in which I take all the dimensions and I show you exactly how to make the reverse engineering of the threads. That's going to be in the description below. This is how the mechanism works internally. When you pull the handle, this face and this face will be tangent to this face. They're always going to be coming in constant friction once you pull that handle. So you pull up and there comes the friction. Now you're gonna see this silicone um, suction cup here that's going through the body. Sometimes Cal will do this. Uh, that's going through the body. In actuality, in real life, let me show you what's happening. This face, or the silicone suction cup, will be hitting this face and it will expand to the outside. It's always going to be on the, on the interior. It will never go through the body like you're seeing right now. So what's causing the yellow silicon suction cup to move up and down, you may ask? Well, as you can see, the handle has got two cylinders here that go into this green pin. And these cylinders always hit the roof of the pin, this face right here. Why do they always come in contact with the roof? It's because there's a spring. Let me do a cross section to show you. This spring is always coming in contact with this face and this face of the pin. So it always wants to expand. By default, the water faucet will always be in this configuration you're seeing right now. This is the closed configuration because the spring is always wanting to expand and be here. Imagine the five gallon water jug here. The water is flowing and this is the closed configuration. It's going to come in contact with this face, this vertical face of the silicon suction cup and it's going to prevent it, prevent the water from going down the faucet. And then when you want to open the faucet, you go like this and the water flows down. Supporting medical device engineering teams who have either insufficient bandwidth or expertise internally Pipeline develops custom turnkey fixtures and automated equipment to test, inspect, characterize, qualify, and assemble your devices.